So as they say here in Harambe, twin day. Let's go. Hey, goodbye to everybody else. Goodbye. Everybody else. And Jumbo to you all. My name is Kyle, and I'm going to be your game spotting driver on your photo safari here through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve today. This reserve was established all the way back in 1971 to help protect wildlife out there in Africa. And over the last 37 years, the animals have become a lot less afraid of humans, which is great for us. It also makes it very easy targets for poachers, which is not good. So to help protect them, we do have wildlife rangers constantly patrolling the 800 square miles, and we do have to check in with them before we can enter the reserve. So while I'm checking in with them on the radio, take a look at those game spotting eyes there to help you identify some of the animals. Also remember, we have very few rules out here on Safari. One of them is that you must remain seated at all times, as you can see right here. Yes, you may sit down, hold hands over, interpretive dancing is not allowed. So keep it in the seats and do not stand up whatsoever. And, yeah, okay. Alrighty. You're all looking at me like, what's your point then? Like, it's science there, right? Okay. Hey, everyone, patrol, this is symbol one. Please come in. Jumbo Wilson, we're coming into a little Latouri forest right now. I'm Jumbo, Simba one. Keep your eyes open and drive carefully. Will do, Wilson. All right, guys, look right over there on the left side. Those bright orange creatures there are called bongos, also known as the ghost of the forest because they are very rarely seen and very reclusive. Kind of like the okapi over there as well. Those are also reclusive animals. They kind of look like a half zebra and a half horse. However, they're not even related to the zebra. They are the only known relative of the giraffe, strangely enough. And coming up here... On the left side, you can see a watery hole, they common place for different types of animals to commingle, including some yellow-billed storks you can see down there, commonly found around water because they eat small snakes and frogs. And a lot of the animals out here in Africa, and even just on our reserve, have one thing in common, and that is that many of them are endangered species, like this guy right over here, the black rhino. It's a very reclusive animal. There are less than 3,600 of them left in the wilds of Africa, and that is due to illegal poaching for their horns. Even those guys who don't really have any natural predators because they're so big and they have a one inch thick hide and they can charge at 35 miles an hour still cannot outrun poachers. Even on reserves like ours, the animals are not 100% safe from poachers and other illegal hunters, but we do the best we can to help protect all of them. Coming up here on the left side of this clearing are some saddle billed storks. The tallest storks in Africa, standing up to about five to six feet tall with an eight to nine foot wide wingspan. Those birds are so big that they can actually eat smaller birds while they're flying in the air. We're gonna head a little bit deeper into the forest here and head on down towards the Safi River. Rivers like the Safi that flow through the rainforest are very common places to find a lot of different types of animals, including a very large creature called the Nile hippopotamus, or the hippopotamus as some people like to call them. Now to look for hippos, you want to look at the surface of the water, their bodies are going to be poking out as if they're swimming. However, hippos don't really swim at all, they just walk at the bottom of the river holding their breath anywhere from not five to eight minutes at a time. You can see quite a few of them over there on the left side. Hippos will stay underwater pretty much all day, only come in out at nighttime where they will eat up to 150 pounds of food on average. 
making them nocturnal animals. Those big white and gray birds you see there are called pink-backed pelicans. They always flock in very large numbers of the hundreds because they form big brigades in the waters to chase fish in the deeper areas and more shallow areas. That way they go all feeding together at the same time. Oh, right down there by that waterfall, a crocodile tail just went underwater. He's probably going to come right back up. Crocs don't spend too much time underwater. They usually come up every now and then. I forget him. There's like 10 of them over here. Now, these are Nile crocodiles, and these are also not the newest bridges in the world, so cross your fingers. Those guys get up to about 20 feet long. They are incredibly aggressive creatures. They can crush the bones of their prey, applying about 1,200 pounds of pressure per square inch when they clench those jaws together. So we don't really like to stay around here very long. They're very aggressive and very lethal, so here we go.
coming up on Monkey Point. We'll see. over there, complete with a little baby one down there, flapping its ears, cooling itself off. Their blood vessels are so thin in their ears. You guys, a little bit of background music you're dealing with that? Uh, <laughs> up here we'll take us over to the red clay pits very common place for african elephants hopefully we'll see a bit more than just those three we saw back there like i said when we went over those crocs these are not the newest bridges in the world so do hang on I feel like i'm on the right side of your left oh, my God. <laughs> oh ah that was fun everybody okay you know simple ah or no no the bridge is falling but be fine anyway. no oh no all right good times all right, up here is what I was talking about, one of the red clay pits. You can actually see where elephants have been there, tusk marks and footprints in the clay here. Elephants do eat red clay, gives them a lot of the minerals they need to survive since that they don't get in their diet of green vegetation. Now both male and female African elephants both have hydrate tusks, making them very large targets for poachers. That's why so many scientists are studying the animals up close. They do believe that African elephants can talk to each other on a frequency that humans cannot hear. And if we can figure out how they communicate in the wild to survive, the better we can work to try to help protect them. by some greater flamingos. The greater flamingo is the lightest shade of pink out of all flamingos in the world. If you look down there, you can see some younger ones, the kind of white and gray ones with black feet. When flamingos are born, they are those shades of gray, and it's their diet of brine shrimp and other crustaceans filled with the substance carotene that will actually give them their pink color. These were once an endangered species, but they are now back up to a fully sustainable level due to anti-poaching laws and other conservation efforts, just like ours here in Harambe. 
As you can see, the white rhino really isn't white at all. It gets its name from Dutch settlers who called it the white rhinoceros. Bite meaning wine, referring to their wide mouth. Since they have such poor eyesight, they use their big wide rough lips to feel for food that's shooting out of the ground. As you'll notice, when they walk around, they will keep their mouths very close to the ground, feeling for anything that's picking up or sticking out. Those guys can weigh up to about 5,000 pounds and they can charge at 35 miles an hour, so they're very powerful creatures. Have very few predators out there in the wild. Still something ahead of us, not too sure what. Uh, white rhinos are infamous for standing in our pants because, well, as you can see, they're very, very large. Like I said, they can charge about 35 miles an hour, and this truck only goes about 8 miles an hour, so we don't really like to make them do that. Also, keep your eyes open in these big shaded areas around here and up ahead. These are common places for big cats like cheetahs and lions to hide. Simba one, I see you at the junction. I suggest you go west. It will be worth it. Roger that. Well, someone actually headed west right now. Look, you see cheetahs right on top of that rock right there through the tall grass. Cheetahs specifically like to hide in the shade so they can stay low to the ground and out of the sight of their prey. That way they can pounce out at 70 miles an hour, making them the fastest land animals in the world. Now other big cats like lions don't really hide in the shade as often. Their coats aren't really spotted, they don't have a lot of camouflage, so they do like to put themselves high above the savannah on very large rock formations called kopis. These big rock islands, like this one right up here, will give lions a nice vantage point of the entire land to look after their prey. Take those out mostly as safe havens. That way, if they ever get chased by a lion or a cheetah, then they will back into that burrow and then fight off their predator with their razor sharp tusks. There's some ostrich eggs up here on the right side. Ostriches are the largest bird in the world, they produce the largest egg in the world. Those eggs will weigh about three to five pounds each and are strong enough for a human to stand on without breaking. Wilson, we're actually near the edge of the reserve right now. Um, all right, guys, we're going to be headed out of here. We're going to go try to corner some of these people and let themselves in here. This is kind of a common problem that we're having. We are trying to stop it. So everyone just remain seated. Hold on to anything you don't want to lose. This might get a little bit rough. We're on our way, Wilson. Hold on. All right, guys, this guy's your country. might get a little slick. Hold on to something. Well, said I can hear them, but I don't see them, and I think I just found their camp, but I think they're gone. I don't see anyone, Wilson. Well, thanks.
Thanks for sticking with us. We are no longer in the reserve, so I'm going to go ahead and drop the guys off at the nearest Warden's post. From there, it'll be just a quick walk back to the Harambe Village. I hope you guys have seen and learned out there today. We'll remind you that no matter where you live or where you travel, anywhere from adoring an animal to saving a mother elephant, you can always help protect wildlife and wild places. And I would also like to take a moment to thank all of you. I know you have a choice in safari expeditions through the African bush country, but I'd like to thank you for choosing Kilimanjaro safaris. <laughs> we're the absolute best safari in Eastern Africa, mostly because we're the only safari in Eastern Africa. So come and see us again whenever you get a chance. If you guys have not already done so, I suggest you head on over to the Pangani Forest Trail where you can see more animals from the African wildlife like gorillas, calamus monkeys, and meerkats, a lot of diff different types of birds and fish, as well as one of those forest animals we saw there, like the okapi, which is the half zebra looking creature, and the Nile hippo. Also, here in Harambe is the Wildlife Express, a train that will take you back to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Back there, you can visit a section section where you can pet and interact with some of the animals, as well as conservation station, where you can they will actually bring the animals up to you and do a lot more in-depth animal presentations. I'm sorry, I'm not too sure what the uh, holdup is here, but hopefully we should be on the move in just a few moments. Hopefully. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Oh, Bye. See you later. <laughs> Having a cool day out there. Thank you. secret people take too long getting off. So don't take too long getting off. That's a good idea. The people behind us will get me. Sorry about that delay, but we are now headed on up here. Now we have a lot of words that we use in Swahili here in Harambe, like Jumbo for a little caribou for welcome and Asante Sana for thank you. However, there is no word for goodbye. Instead, we use the term Kwaharini, which means go well. So, if you like Kwaharini, go well. Enjoy the rest of your time here in Harambe and out there in the wild and looking down. Oh! Welcome back, everybody. Watch your hands and feet as you step up. Have a great day. Thank you. I'll give it to you out here.